Hello there, Dan Calloway here, and today I'm going to uh, use Manjaro Architect to uh, develop my own spin of Manjaro Linux. So I'm in my VM, and let me go ahead and start this Manjaro KDE Linux DP, calling it DP Spin, and I'm going to base it on Arch Linux 64 bit. Uh, I think I'll give this VM uh, 4 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to do 4096 and do create here. Um, and then uh, I'm going to give it a uh, 100 gigabytes of uh, hard drive space. Let's click, cre uh, click Create and go into Settings before we launch it and go into System. I'm going to give it two processors. Uh, and then on the Storage, I'm going to click Empty and uh, select Manjaro Architect 17.1.12. <clears throat> it's a pretty neat application, actually. I'll show you how that's done. All right, on network settings here, I'm going to select bridged adapter, click OK, and then go ahead and start the VM. Now this is Manjaro Architect I'm starting, not not the Manjaro Linux that I'm creating. I'm going to create it from this. I want to click uh, full screen, go into full screen mode, and then here we can click on uh, down arrow to boot and boot up on Manjaro Architect. Uh, it'll take a few seconds for this to come up and then once we get to the login screen uh, to start the process here we have uh, a username and a password it's going to be Manjaro for both of those and then set up to get it going pretty slick uh, application here you can build your own Manjaro uh, span here so Manjaro username Password is Manjaro, and then type setup, and that uh, should get us into the installer for configuring our own spin here of Manjaro. I'm going to do a KDE spin today. All right, so I'm going to select English as the language, apply that, and um, here I'm just going to click OK and prepare the installation, set the virtual console, we're going to keep the US list the devices here, we've got the 100 gig uh, disk only one. Partitioning the disk here, it's dev SDA 100 gigs. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to use FDisk for this process, I'm going to scroll down to FDisk and uh, that launches FDisk for me you hit M here, you can get a listing of all of the commands you can use in FDisk if you're familiar with it. Alright, so I'm going to do a N here to set up a partition. I'm going to select E um, here when I get a chance. This is a um, 100 gig drive here, so I'm going to do E for uh, yeah, so we do the whole thing here for an extended partition <clears throat> so that you can see the whole thing is extended. All right, so I'm going to hit um, the uh, selection again, and I'm going to go ahead and do a plus 512 megabytes. Okay, and that's going to be the boot partition. In again, and or P to look at it, and then in again, and then go to the next one. And so I'm going to do a plus uh, four gig for the swap, since I'm giving it four gigs hit P so we can take a look at it again <clears throat> and then uh, go ahead and select uh, plus 25 uh, gigs for the uh, root partition so I'll make logical partitions for all of these instead of primary and then uh, the last one here I'm going to give it the rest of the drive and so now we have a 70.5 gig home directory so this is the structure we're going to be using now we're going to write that by hitting W. Alright, so we don't need the rest of those. We're going to mount the partitions. Uh, and click OK. And uh, it says to select the root partition and that's the <clears throat> 25 gig partition. So I'll select that, click OK. And then I'm going to format this EXT4 and then select Yes. And I'm not going to change this at all. This is fine. Click OK and Yes to mount it. Alright, now we need to do the swap and the swap is the, is the 4 gig. So 
So I'm going to do the 4 gig here, swap, click yes, and up. Oh, now bounced out of it. Let me get back into it. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to do that over. Mount partitions, click OK. Uh, root partition is the 25 gig. Got to be careful when you're in the screens here. Um, formatting it ext4. Click OK and yes. Just do this over again. Click OK and yes here. All right, so the mount was successful. Now the root partition is, the, I mean the swap is the four gig. All right, and so we're going to click OK for the swap. We're not going to be formatting it because it's swap. Now the, the rest of them we're going to do here, uh, the 512M is going to be the boot partition. And so I'm going to put in boot and click OK. And then click Yes. And then the final partition, the logical, is the 70.5, which is the ext4 formatted uh, home partition so click yes type in home here and that's what I want to use home and then click OK and click OK here and yes and it mounts successful as well as well and all right so we're done so we're going to click hit the enter key on done, click OK, or actually hit OK for on the enter, you know, on the enter key. Configuring the installer mirror list, uh, we'll do that in a moment. We're going to do the uh, looking at the configuration files. I don't see any problem with this file, so I'm going to do a control X <clears throat> and uh, save that and then yes here. I'm going to update the database and then we're going to do the uh, Pac-Man mirror here in a moment. This is the Pac-Man file. Uh, that's a stable branch we want to look at, so we'll uh, go with that. And now we're going to select the mirrors here um, and click OK and um, let this run. Okay, so what this thing is doing is it's going to go out and look at all the mirrors pick the fastest ones and then present it to you so that you can select it yourself. Now this is going to take a little while so I'm going to go at some point and pause the video and come back when it's done. Alright, so now we can uh, refresh the keys here. Uh, what I didn't show you in this video was I went ahead and selected the ones I wanted. Alright, we're pausing this one now and now we're coming back to when it's uh, almost finished. All right, now we're going to not going to choose the Pac-Man cache. We're going to go back and we're going to install the desktop system and we're going to install the Banjaro desktop. First need to install Git. And I'm going to select UART and then I'm going to pick a Linux uh, kernel. And for this purpose, I'm going to select Linux 417. All right, and click OK. And I'm going to select uh, for the kernel here uh, the VirtualBox guest modules since I am in VirtualBox. Click OK. Now the uh, desktop environment I'm going to select as KDE. I'm hitting the space bar by the way to make the selections. Then yes here. All right, so the additional packages I'm going to select, I'm going to select Firefox. And when I get next to the item uh, to select it, I'm hitting Tab. I'm also going to select Fire Jail. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and pick Parted and Gparted. So I'm going to tab both of those. And Fire Jail, by the way, is a way to uh, uh, sandbox applications. And so that's a nice application to install. Spectacle is another one. So I've got five selected so far. Uh, let's see GFTP, uh, GNOME FTP client, select that one. Uh, FileZilla, tab that, select that one. So that's seven so far that I have selected. And let's see what else do I want here. Um, I think I want to do the qubit torrent. 
All right, so I'm going to select that one. Right, tab to select that. And that would uh, bring my total up to uh, nine, I believe. All right, uh, Audacity is another one I want to select, so I'll tab that one. That's nine, actually. And then what else do I want here? Um, let's take a look. HTOP, select that one. And I believe one more should do it. GR Sync, I believe. I believe that'll bring a total to 11. Don't think there's anything else I want. Um, now we're going to hit the inner key and then um, I want a full um, Manjaro so I'm going to select full and click OK. And so that's going to start downloading all of the files including the ones that I selected. This is going to be a long process and so I'm going to pause the video at some point and come back uh, when I think it's about done. Okay, we're back, and now it's installing, and this is going to take a while as well, so I'll probably pause the video once again, come back when it's finished installing. Okay, it's about done. Uh, it's wrapping up the installation and it's finalizing this installation process here. Manjaro Architect is a pretty neat application actually. It does, uh, gives you a lot of power in building your own spin of, uh, of Manjaro. And I'm a big fan of Manjaro. It's an Arch Linux based distribution. Alright, so we're going to do uh, new free drivers. We're going to auto install those, not the proprietary ones. We're in a VM here. We don't really need the proprietary ones. Alright, and so it's installing those drivers. Going to hit the enter key to continue. And now we're going to install the bootloader and its grub. And uh, pretty soon we're going to have to tell it where to put it. And it's going to be on the dev SDA, the whole drive. And there we go, 100 gig dev SDA. Click OK. And we're waiting for it to do its thing. It's installing the grub on the hard drive. All right, we're going to configure the base. And the fstab file, we select dev uuid. Host name, we're going to call it uh, Manjaro uh, dp spin vm. Click OK. System locale, I'm going to uh, tell it en us utf8, if I can find it here. Uh, it's somewhere here. I just missed it, I think. Um, oh, it's down, down further. There it is. There we go. Select that. And, um, oh wait a minute, that's the wrong one. There we go. And uh, click OK. All right. Uh, and now we're going to select the desktop environment key, keypad, key mapping, rather. So that's US. Setting the time zone and clock, I'm going to tell it I'm in America and uh, city of New York, which is the eastern time zone. So we'll go down and select New York. There we go. And select OK and yes. All right, and I'm going to select the local rather than UTC. Um, setting the root password, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. and retype it to confirm it. 
So then hit the enter key for OK. Um, it's going to set up a new user, Data Pioneer. And I'm going to give them the bash shell, born again shell. Click OK. And then now I'm going to put the password in for Data Pioneer. Select OK. Now it's creating the new user groups. Let's go back. Uh, system tweaks, let's look at those. Uh, don't need automatic login, don't need any of these here. I'm going to go back and um, let's see what else. Review the configuration files. Oh, I'm going to go back, I think, and look at the CLI. Um, actually, I went to the wrong area, so let me go back. I don't need system rescue. And so um, let's look here. Let's go back. And I think I'm done, actually. And so let's uh, close the installer and write the file for the configuration. And so I'm completed. And so let's go ahead and reboot the system. I'm probably going to have to go back out to the VM and uh, um, eject the CD-ROM because it'll probably boot up on the uh, Manjaro Architect again. Yeah, it booted up on that. So let me go back out to the VM. Let me shut down the uh, VM itself. Let's power off and let's go back into settings and reset the boot order. So under system, just untick the floppy, uh, hit the hard drive, move it up and move it underneath. So we got hard drive first and then CD-ROM second. Let me go ahead and restart the VM. And now it should boot up on the hard drive itself. Yeah, okay, so Manjaro Linux, let's go ahead and hit that. And now we should be booting up into our newly installed uh, Manjaro Linux DP spin. All right, and so it's coming up now, and it um, takes a few seconds to, to boot up. This VM is running on my VM server, by the way. There we go. And let's go ahead and log in under Data Pioneer. Time is wrong, but we'll change that later on. Okay, so it uh, should come up the full screen here. Uh, I don't think, it, because the kernel drivers uh, included the uh, VBox editions, I don't think we're going to need to do anything. All right, so it did come up the full screen. That's good. And it takes a few seconds to settle in. Okay, and so now we got the Welcome to Manjaro. We really don't need to see that again, so I'm going to untick that. Um, it's got various things you can do under Documentation, Support, and Project. Let's close it. Let's go over and select the application launcher and go up to the terminal. Let me uh, bring that up to full screen and increase the font size a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Uh, and I'm going to check uh, the uname A and see if I got the kernel that I selected. Uh, and I did. I've got the uh, 4.17.19.1. Okay, so we got the right one, Manjaro. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, disk size uh, DF on that and uh, see how much disk space we're taking up. And then finally, let's get into F disk to look at the. Uh, I'm gonna have to do a sudo on F disk though, and uh, take a look at the structure again. Make sure that's correct. So dev sda, and put in the password for uh, Data Pioneer, and let's do a P to look at that print out the uh, structure and there we go 100 gig drive and it's uh, been uh, partitioned the way you see it here under logical partitions under the extended okay so let's go ahead and quit and uh, get out of this all together here clear the screen first and um, yeah while we're, let's go ahead and exit okay so now First thing I want to do is right click and configure the desktop and change the wallpaper. And so it'll open up the uh, desk folder settings for me under Plasma. Let me select that one and apply it. 
Click OK. I like this wallpaper. All right, so let's go back in and let me do alternate here and go to the application menu and switch. It kind of looks like a regular menu here for us. Okay, so that's what we have under development, education, games. We've got Steam. I don't game. Graphics. We've got these applications under graphics. Uh, Internet. Let's go back. Uh, Palzilla, Firefox, GFTP. Those are the ones that are installed, remember. Uh, under multimedia, we've got Audacity, uh, Katana, and, and others. Office, we've got the full Office suite. And Microsoft Office Online, by the way. Um, settings here, we've got the Manjaro settings manager and some other things. Notice the bouncing cursor. It's the first thing I want to try to get rid of. All right, so I'm in system settings, and I uh, just need to locate it here, but let me take a look around uh, under workspace theme. Let's look at, look, at, look at the look and feel. And we're on breath. I'm going to change that to breeze dark. Let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, looks a lot better. And so uh, we got the user accounts there and uh, locale and other things. Let's go down and find the uh, option here for, I think it's under Applicate, right, Launch and Launch Feedback. Select that. No feedback. Let's tick that and untick Enable Animation and apply that so we don't get any bouncing cursor. I don't like the bouncing cursor. And so let's go ahead and launch Firefox and see no bouncing cursor when I did that. A lot of people like it. I just, I just don't, I don't care for it. Okay, so let's expand to Firefox. Let's see what version we have. Should have the latest version or pretty close. So let's go under uh, Help and About Firefox. Yeah, we got uh, Firefox Quantum 6301, 64-bit. Pretty late version. I'll sync that later. Let's go ahead and close the tabs here. And uh, let's get under the network uh, interface here. We've got a wired connection 1. I'm going to change that. It's actually ENP0S3 for Ethernet port 0 socket 3. And so let me bring that down. Untick the ask for pin on modem detection. And then show and configure virtual connections. Click OK. And then I'm going to select uh, configure uh, the network settings and then here I'm going to change this to wired ENP0S3 connection and then apply that and that changes the name click OK now we get back in and just verify it yep there it is okay so we're set to go there and let's go ahead and close that and um, Let's see what we want to do next. Let's get back under the Start menu. And let's go back up to Office and select LibreOffice, see what version we have here. Looks like at least version 6 something. OK, and so let's go to Help and About Office, LibreOffice. And yeah, we've got uh, version 6.1.3.2. Pretty late version, that's good. Let's go ahead and close that. And uh, next, let's go up to, um, let's reopen the terminal here, console. And uh, let me expand it again, get the font size up a little bit so you can see what we're doing. Let's do HTOP, take a look at this. The memory is pretty good, 941 meg out of uh, 4 gigs. Um, Load average is looking good. Uh, anything under 1.0 here for the, the three settings is great. 66 tasks run, and we got one running. And so everything looks looks hunky dory here. Looks great. Looks fine. All right, so um, let's go ahead and uh, let's do a sudo pacman dash capital S Y U to update the system. We shouldn't have any updates here because we just got a newly installed. Yep, nothing to do here. So since we have nothing to do, uh, we can go ahead and probably, um, let's see here, let's do a sudo shutdown. Let's just go ahead and shut down dash H now and shut down. So 
Thanks for watching, guys.